Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 608. Titles of research articles on hormone treatment are often misleading. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about how to read or how to understand articles that are written about hormone replacement therapy or hormones, anything with the title of hormone in it or estrogen in it. Um, Many times these titles are very misleading and it almost feels like they're intentionally misleading which I find to be very irritating um, because most people don't read anything besides the headline. And if you just read headlines and you don't read the rest of the article or the rest of the research or the rest of the newspaper article or magazine article, you are likely to believe the opposite of what they actually are telling you and should tell you uh, if they are actually getting to the truth. So... I, I want to stop you from being afraid. It's the job of journalists to get you to read something. So they usually put something at the, in the title that causes you to be afraid, to want more information because you're fearful of something happening. Like if you're on estrogen, you're on hormones, then the title that brings you in to read it is often frightening. And it doesn't necessarily mean that hormones are bad. It may be the opposite. So for example, I'm putting up um, a title of an article that was in um, the Endocrine News, which is the Endocrine Society. Um, We all have societies. Obese have societies. Endocrine is the hormone, um, hormone society, basically. Hormones that are not sex hormones. Obese take OGYNs take care of the sex hormones. Endocrinologists generally don't, and generally take care of all the other hormones in the body. And there are many. So the this article I pulled because it was so misleading. I couldn't believe it. I need to talk. To, I need to send a letter to the editor because it's by the uh, senior editor of this news. It's like a um, journal, and. Under Trends and Insights, it's a one-page article, and it's, it writes, estrogen levels linked to higher risk of COVID-19 mortality in older women. Now, that sounds like high estrogen levels are linked to mortality, and that you should be afraid of estrogen, that you're taking estrogen, you might die of COVID. However, the article does not say that. The article, at the very bottom of the article, after it does many different uh, word plays to keep your interest and keep thinking that it's estrogen that's the problem, it basically says that you have a 50% lower chance of dying if you are on estrogen replacement therapy. You have a lower chance of dying from COVID. We know that you have a lower chance of dying from other things too, like heart disease. But they get you into this article that we have, uh, we have the title posted here. And they actually, the, the author, the, the, um, editor writes all of this information to make you think that estrogen's bad. But estrogen was saving lives. Estrogen, women who are on estrogen after menopause, lived 50% more times or higher, um, their mortality was lower. So they lived more, higher, I can't even describe it, (laughs) obviously. But this is, this is like lying in my, in my estimation, when you lead someone to the, the conclusion in your title 
that something is going to hurt them. And then at the very bottom of your article, you say that actually low estrogen hurts them, not estrogen replacement. Estrogen replacement saved their lives. So this is what I want to talk about. There are other things that happen um, in, in the world of journalism about medicine. Uh, and a lot of um, articles, in, research articles, are misleading by their title, even in medical journals like this. But, they're even, but when you go to lay journals or lay newspapers, they do the same thing. They have a, they have a habit of trying to mislead you and scare you and then get you in to read it so that they keep your attention. That's their trick, and it's it's another one of those things that we should be aware of, kind of like spam emails, that you don't, I mean, if they do that, write to them and say, you just misled me and scared me, and that's not, that's not proper, that, a letter to the editor, which is what I plan on doing. So first of all, when you see a scary title about something, some hormone, some medication that you're on, please read the whole article. Don't just take that headline and assume that that headline means something that it doesn't. Um, one of the other things I'd like you to do is to understand that how research works, especially research about hormones. Every day I read um, generalizations about hormones. Now, every, when everybody reads hormones in the, in the lay press, they think estrogen. But there are many, many hormones throughout your body uh, estrogen and testosterone and es are just a few of them. Uh, you have thyroid, you have adrenal hormones. There are many hormones that you have from the pituitary, stimulating hormones. Those are all hormones. But for some reason, when they say hormones do this, we think estrogen. So don't be, don't be caught in that. Um, when reading anything about h hormones being dangerous, uh, or unsafe, you're going to have to read the whole article. I'm sorry, you're going to have to waste some time doing that. Because the author of these studies, the research studies, and the, uh, the journalistic reviews of these studies are lumping all of the types of estrogen together. Not only, I mean, there's three types of estrogen. There's estradiol, which is young women's estrogen. There's estrone, which is old lady estrogen. That's from your adrenal gland, not your ovary. And then there's estriol, which is pregnancy estrogen. So you have three estrogens. They say estrogen, and they, they're, they're not telling you which estrogen, and they all act differently in our, inside our bodies. And we usually only replace estrogen with a either a synthetic estradiol or a natural estradiol made from plants. So there are two kinds of estri estradiols. So we keep coming down to a more specific estrogen or a more specific hormone, but in the studies they just say hormones or they just say estrogen. They don't tell you what kind of estrogen is worrisome. So here's, here's the best example I can give you of something that changed medical practice and, um, and, and denied the ability of women to get estrogen for 20 years. There was a study that came out that headlined, um, estrogen causes blood clots in women. And hormone replacement therapy causes blood clots in women. So that study was about, was, was a study that used one hormone, one replacement hormone by one company, and you know there's many different estrogens, many different um, synthetic estrogens, and many different ways to take bioidentical estrogens, but they just said estrogen. And this particular study studied Premarin. Now Premarin isn't even a, a human estrogen. It is a combination of 17 horse estrogens. That's what you're taking when you take a pill of Premarin. It's a dried version of the estrogens, estrogens that come from horse urine. Premarin means pregnant mare urine, believe it or not. So that's why they called it Premarin. 
So they studied horse, horse estrogen given to women and they gave it to them orally. And they gave it to them with Pro, Provera, which is a um, another problem, but is another hormone that is synthetic and looks a little bit like progesterone, the female hormone. So they gave them this combination, this specific combination. They did a big study with lots of women on this drug, and they found that women on Premarin, oral Premarin, had twice as many blood clots during their whatever their study time was as women who took nothing. Well, that generalization uh, that damned all estrogens, that damned all hormone replacement therapy, spread throughout all the doctors, all the patients. There were hysterical phone calls. People were, were denied estrogen replacement, which means that put them at risk for heart disease. It put them at risk for uh, osteoporosis, for sarcopenia, for... Um, no estrogen and, and menopause and no replacement put you at risk for Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And it's only oral estrogens. Oral estrogens do increase your risk of blood clots. So that's all birth control pills. And that's Premarin and some of the other oral estrogens like es uh, estrace. Those oral estrogens do increase your risk of getting a blood clot. But all the estrogens that are not oral, all the patches, all, all of the vaginal tabs, all of the pellets, which is all I use, um, they do not increase a woman's risk of getting a blood clot. So this study generalized their findings to every estrogen and damned the use of it, basically made it a, 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 a problem with getting sued because no one really read the study. No one really understood that it was just oral. It took 20 years to sort this out. So I had people sign a high-risk uh, high um, consent because if they couldn't live without their estrogen, then they wanted it anyway. They'd rather have a blood clot than live like this. So I had them sign high-risk consents and I gave them their estrogen and no, they, I didn't give it orally and I didn't give it and they didn't have blood clots. But then after that first study, other little studies trickled through the, the journals and we finally came up with, oh, I'm sorry, it was just oral estrogen. It's not, it is not um, patches or pellets or uh, creams or gels or vaginal tabs. It is only that kind of estrogen. Now, it does turn out that even if you take estrace orally, that does increase your risk of having blood clots. If you are genetically uh, prone to blood clots, one of the things we could do is we could test everybody for their genetic uh, risk of having blood clots and not put those women on oral estrogen. But they could be on any other estrogen without Giving, uh, giving those blood test uh, results or getting those blood test results. So there are ways to work around this, even if it were true, but it's not. So this is one of the ways that a study that is overgeneralized can actually change your life because you can't get a doctor to write estrogen for you. And that's wrong. And they do this all the time and they do it, they do it in every area of hormone replacement trying to scare people. So let me just list the differences between estrogens, why you can't just take a test on one specific, using one specific estrogen and then blanket doom all the other estrogens. There are synthetic estrogens made in a laboratory versus bioidentical made from plants, made from uh, yams, and there are so that's one difference. And then you can either have the human form of, of estrogen. You can have est estradiol, estrone, or estriol. All are compounded. Est estradiol is usually in some of the oral estrogens, but it's in many of the bioidentical uh, formulations, and it's in my pellets. Estradiol is pure estradiol is in my estrogen pellets, and that's all that's in it. Then you also can have horse urine estrogen, which is Premarin. 
Uh, so all of those are different. They have different side effects. They have different activities. They, they literally have different ways of uh, reacting throughout your body. So that's, so synthetic versus bioidentical. And what type of estrogen is it? Then we have um, how is it, and, and, and how is it given? Is it given transdermally, like a cream, or is it a patch? They have different side effects than put it, giving it vaginally or giving it as a, pa or a, a patch or a uh, pellet or giving it as a shot. Some people take IM shots of estradiol. So all of those different types have different side effects and different issues. I pick pellets, pellet estrogen, because it has the fewest side effects and the most benefit. If you look at my book, I have a, a comparison in the secret female hormone um, that you can get on Amazon. It has a list and a grid of all the different types of uh, delivery systems and the difference in their risks and benefits. So I've, I've described this in my book. And they're all different. So a test on one estrogen does not re does not say that these other estrogens are going to have the same outcomes. Um, they also there is also a difference in how many times a day or a week or a month or a year that you take a hormone. This is important because if it's a hormone that you've got to dose three times a day, you're probably not going to do it. If it's a hormone that you can dose once a day, you're more likely to, but even then, you're only going to be compliant 60% of the time. If it's a patch you can have for three and a half days or a week that you put it on your abdomen or, um, or your hip, then you're more likely to actually have estradiol given to you than if you were taking it orally because you only have to think about it once or twice a week. If you take pellets then you only have to take it every four months if you're a female. Every four months, you can remember that. You go to the doctor's office, get your pellets put in, you're done. You don't have to think about it until the next four months come up. So number of times, the, the frequency of dosing really does matter. The higher the number of dosages, the less likely you are to be able to get all those doses into you because, you know, life in intervenes. Sometimes you just forget. Um, and the last is some of the studies are meant to fail. I mean, basically when you do a study, you're looking for an outcome. So you can make studies about, my favorite is vitamins. They'll say, oh, in one study they'll say, oh, vitamin D doesn't work to decrease Alzheimer's, to decrease cancer, to decrease your, your risk of, of getting severe COVID. That study, will say that because it lowers the dose in the study so low that the person in the study isn't getting enough to do any good. They do that with the hormones too. They lower the dose so low that no one is getting any effect. Of course, they don't have side effects, but they might as well not take it because they're not getting any, they're not getting enough to do any good. So if you want a study to fail, if you, if you are somebody who says, yeah, I don't really like the fact that people take B12. Well, then you're going to give people in your study such a low dose does nothing. So that's a way that they can manipulate uh, medical information that's considered, even in journals, they, they do this. It's crazy why they would allow that in, in, in journals. So investigators do this. People who get grants for a particular reason to make a study fail. Um, so basically, because this is this information is spread by TV, by doctors, by um, internet, then doctors get freaked out. And they, they didn't read the study, but they heard about it and they go, oh no, I, I, I'm not gonna prescribe that anymore. So it does affect you. It affects what you get as your hormone replacement and it affects how fearful you are every day when you're taking it. I mean, you shouldn't be fearful about taking a drug that is actually your own hormone and supporting your own metabolism and your own brain cells, you should not have to worry about that because worry in itself is not good for you. So to get the truth, you have to read the whole thing. You almost have to have a doctor tell you whether the dose was right. You have to figure out what kind it is and if that even applies to you. If you're taking pellets, almost none of these studies apply to you because we have fewer, 
fewer side effects, we have better uh, reactions and better outcomes than any other type of estrogen. So if you read a study that says it's going to cause breast cancer, it doesn't. And if you say it's going to cause heart disease, it makes heart disease less likely and, and less likely for you to die of heart disease. And it keeps you young. So these are the things that are wrong with what you read in the journal or in journalism or in newspapers or online. So you have to be very careful before you take this in as fact. You have to make sure that you are not then repeating the information to then make other people scared because of what you read and you know it's probably not really apl apl applicable to them. So I just want you to understand that studies can lie <laughs> and, and they do every day. So you have to be very careful about how they're done, who's doing it, and for what reason they're doing it. So I do use studies, I do read them, but I make sure that they're the truth before I pass them on. I hope that this helped you not be afraid, not be worried about what you read, and not have anxiety about taking hormone replacement therapy. It is life-saving. It saves your quality of life as well as your body, as well as your, as well as your heart and your brain. You should be taking estrogen replacement if you can, and you should be taking it the best way. That's all, that's, that's my final line. In general, that's, that's a true, that's a truth. And it does keep you healthy. So in the preventive medicine practice, we want our patients to take hormones and replace the ones that are missing uh, since they got older. Please join us next week for another interesting discussion. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BioBalanceHealth.